be able to say that if your sign is Aries, then the sign that is equivalent to it in Hermetic philosophy would be Amen. Amen is the ram. Aries is the ram. The same symbols you will find on the walls of Het Heru or Hawthor, Temple of Hawthor. At the top of the ceiling, you will see what is called Dendera, all right, which is the zodiacal constellational sign. All right. In the same format, the Greeks, after they studied it, and um, the one who studied it the most was um, probably Aristotle. He studied it for over 20 years, but it's a 40-year school. <laughs> okay? So he only went halfway. But that information found its way in Greece. All right? But it didn't come through the Greece philosophers or what the Grecian philosophers such as Aristotle or Euripides or uh, Socrates or any of them. It came by way of the people who was there prior to the Europeans coming into that land. And they were called the Minoans. All right? The Minoans. That means they were the followers of men. They were ancient Africans. All right? Who was part of the priesthood of ancient Kemet, and they went into Greece and they formed what became known as the Cretans. All right, customs, and they was known themselves as the Minoans. All right, and so the Minoans is how the information of the zodiac sign as we now know it today comes into being from out of Greece, then it goes into Rome, then from Rome into Europe, and of course. Um, to us to this day. So we're going to take it back to ancient Kimmy and show the correlations between the zodiacal signs that we know of based on the Greek-Roman philosophy, all right, or science, and we're going to show how it correlates back to ancient Kimmy, all right, or to Mary. All right, so like you say, I'm in, I'm in Ra, symbol is the ram. That is Aries. Right? You have Taurus, which is the bull, right? The bull is Apis. A-P-I-S. Apis. Alright? Apis is another form of Osiris, who is Osa. Then you have Gemini, right? The twins. The original twins were the yin and yang, which is the male and female power. Alright? Which were Osa and Oset. Because of the battle between Heru and Set, it became the two males, which becomes the Greek rendition of it, all right, of the two male figures. But originally, it was the yin and yang, which is Osor and Oset, Osiris and Isis, all right? Then, of course, you have um, Cancer, which is actually, um, the crab wasn't used on the Temple Wars of Vigera. What was used was the dung beetle, which is Kepara. Kepara. All right? So Kepara was used. That was the symbol for cancer. All right? Then you have Leo. Leo is Atum. A T U M. Atum. Or Atum Ray. All right? Or Atum Ra. All right? Atum, um, of course, according to the ancients, was the first god to. Emerged from out of the mound of noon, the waters of noon, and he rose up on a mound. All right, um, no coincidence that um, there are mounds which are older than the pyramids themselves. The pyramids becomes um, on this planet, all right, and in this particular Western Hemisphere. In North America, we had over 200,000 mounds at one time. Now they have dwindled down to less than 20,000. And most of them are not even recognized. All right? Like, for example, uh, my wife and I was coming back from Detroit, and we was going through towards Toledo, Ohio. And right there towards Toledo, Ohio, right next to the highway is a gigantic mound. And we looking at it, we're trying to take pictures of it and everything, and people are not even realizing. I'm like, yo, there's a mound pyramid right right here. You know, of course, it's called the Miru or Mir, all right, M-I-R, 
um, you know, or Tekin, which is, of course, the obelisk. Um, so they're called the pyramids, the mirror, or mirror room, the mound. All right, so here we have from Leo, we have Atum, as we say, and then from Atum, um, we go down now to Virgo. Virgo, the symbol of Virgo is the virgin, of course, which is actually called Set, all right, in her form of Mary, M-E-R-I, Mary. This Mary becomes the same Mary that the Catholic Church utilizes to this day, and they call her the Queen of Heaven, all right, and the Mother of God, all right? So who is Arset? Arset is the mother of Heru, according to the mythology. And Heru becomes the same symbolism utilized for the New Testament of Mary and Jesus later on. All right, this is 4,000 years later in the mythology, in the mythos. All right, now, so from there, we have um, Libra. Right? Libra is the balance of scales. That is Mayat. All right? Mayat, you know, have seven principles. Right? Those principles are what? It's called the seven virtues of Mayat, or the seven cardinal virtues of Mayat. It's righteousness, truth, right? Balance, order, harmony, harmony, reciprocity. Come on. Diplomacy. Diplom let's say diplomacy, exactly. Some the intact, tactful. All right, so there's seven principles of Mayat. And so she symbolizes the scale of balance, Libra. Now, the thing about the ancient Egyptians, when you see the scene of Ani being led by Anpu, which is Anubis, who is known as, quote unquote, the angel of death, all right? Of course, Come the Grim Reaper and all of this later on um, in the mythos um, westernized. But as he's being laid, they go into the halls of justice, the hall of Mayat, right? Where they show you the scales. And on one side is the heart. On the other side is the feather. The feather is being weighed against the heart. Why? Because what is known within the Rosicrucian teachings is that on the right ventricle side of the heart is what is called the seed atom. And the seed atom has the ability to inscribe all of your life experiences into it. So that means after you pass physical form, all of your memories is inscribed upon this seed atom. So hence, the heart is weighed against the feather. What is the feather? The feather is the breath of life. The feather is the breath of life. That's what the feather is. How do we know? Because the feather is the symbol of Shu. S-H-U. Shu. All right? Shu, within ancient Kemetic philosophy, means he who raises up. So it's telling you that your breath raises you up, raises your consciousness up. From interpersonal consciousness, intrapersonal consciousness, Life consciousness to subconsciousness to um, super consciousness, magnetic consciousness, and then finally infinite consciousness. It raises you up. So the breath is the media. This is why Jesus said, No one can come to the Father but by me. I'm the way, the truth, and the life. The life. This is why when Christians say that God, um, um, that Jesus existed with God in the beginning, well, that's true. Because God breathed into the nostrils of man the breath of life and made man a living soul. So what did he breathe into man? He breathed the breath of life. What is the breath of life? It's the word made flesh, which is Jesus. How do we know? Because Jesus' name in Aramaic and Old Hebrew is Yahshua. Yahshua. What's the sound you make when you sneeze? Yahshua. Yahshua. Uh-oh. So the sound that you make when you sneeze happened to be wow. the sound of the name of your Messiah, showing that the way you can get to your Father who is in heaven, which is your soul embedded inside your pineal gland, is by raising yourself up, raising Kundalini, or set up to 
the Father who art in heaven, who is known as Asa. And from that divine marriage in heaven comes the birth of Heru, which is your golden light body, which survived death. Hence, now you have saved yourself. You now have utilized what is called the Savior Principle. The word Yahshua in ancient Aramaic in Old Hebrew is known to mean Savior. So the breath actually can save you, transform you in this realm as well as the next. Because what happens is when a person comes into this world, they take a breath in. <gasps> After that, doctor spanks that child on the behind. What happens? <gasps> The soul is activated upon that first cry of that first insulation. All right? What happens at the point of death? The breath is released. <gasps> so the breath brought you into this world, <laughs> make you live in this world, experience this world, and take you out this world. <laughs> It's all based on the breath itself. This is the most important factor in life. You go without food for 40 days and 40 nights like the Messiah, right? You can go without water for about two weeks, but you can only go without the breath for three minutes. Try it. I'll call 911. <laughs> all right? So the breath is the most important aspect of life itself. All right? So that is the key is the breath. Once again, this is why the Messiah said, no one can come to the Father but through me. I'm the way, the truth, and the life. In other words, the breath is the mediator between the physical body and the divine mind, which is the consciousness, which is the soul. And between also the lower self and the higher self. It's the breath in which that caused you to be able to raise up and to get out of this muck and mire, this murky ether, as it is referred to as. All right? Because the Holy Quran, chapter 7, tells us that man is the flesh, is the breath made flesh. That's what it says, that man is the breath made flesh. Wow, that's deep. Man is the breath made flesh. And then when you look at it, the insulation and exhalation is what holds your physical body together. This is what holds your composition together. It's the breath. Think about it. While you're breathing, you are composed. When you're not breathing, you become what? Decomposed. Oh, sir. <laughs> you get it? So while you're breathing, you are composed. Because you have the forces called intra, uh, well, well, it's called synth, synth, um, centrifugal and centrifugal forces. Centrifugal and centrifugal is the push and pull force. That is your insulation and exhalation principle. All right? When you exhale, you push. When you inhale, you pull. Centrifugal and centrifugal force. All right? So that force, or those two forces, when you break it down, because it's actually only one force, but they say it's two, that yin and yang principle is what keeps your physical body together. All right? So when you look at the scale of Libra, that is showing us that the balance of my yacht symbolizes the breath of itself. So at that scene, your heart must be lighter than the breath. In other words, lighter than the energy in which that was pulled up to that heart chakra, which is known as your kundalini, your serpentine fire, earth, wind, and fire. You're just playing it. There's no more than 20 minutes ago. All right? Serpentine fire, 1977, the all-in-all album. All so... <laughs> of course, that's only for those that can remember that. All right? Uh, I just have to be one of those. All right, so what happens is that if your heart have all these, let's say, 
um, evil intents, um, all these um, heavy burdens and all these uh, distractions, you know, this lust, greed, jealousy, envy, all these um, lower attributes, then the heart can't be lighter than the feather, can't be lighter than the breath. So therefore, you have to incarnate back here once again. All right? You have to reincarnate back here once again because your heart was not lighter than the feather. And what happens is that those memories of your last incarnation is ate by an animal called animate. That's the name of the animal that's sitting right next to the scales of balance. And Animus is waiting in order to see if that heart is like that, that feather. If not, <clears throat> he ain't that heart, symbolically. What that means is that now you have to come back into this earthly plane, as my man Bobby say, with that baby brain. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You, can, you know, that's a hell of a thing. You come in, have to come back with this baby brain. So now you're coming back with this baby brain. And you got to do this all over again. And then don't have an instruction. Basic instructions before leaving earth. The Bible is a general template. But if you can't read it esoterically, then you miss the boat. Because right now, the majority of people are reading the Bible as if it's literal history. As if it's exoteric history. Not esoteric, but exoteric. Outside of themselves. And this is the way that has been taught to them. And this is the way in which that oftentimes you find that they are missing the boat in that regard. They can't find their information. So now you have to turn to something like that's a little bit more specific, which is astrology. You see? Now you have to turn to something a little bit more specific, astrology. So now, when you're looking at astrology, you go to Psalms. Go to the book of Psalms, okay? In the book of Psalms, all right, um, Psalms 19, if I'm not mistaken, first verse, it says that the heavens is God's handiwork. That's what it says, that the heavens is God's handiwork. All right, so now if the heavens is God's handiwork, and then it says that that's how you shall, and it goes even further in the sense of paraphrasing that you would be able to read God by looking at the stars. Now, that's right there in Psalms. So that means that astrology plays a part in this. Now, if you think that that's all there is, then that's the problem. All right? Astrology only give, is a tool that you can utilize. All right? It's not the all and end of all. It's just something that can be utilized in order to see your strengths and your weaknesses. The things in which that you can work on. All right? Your weaknesses... You know, and how you can tell is because you, you have basically what's called your north node and your south node. All right? Your north node is what happens when in your last incarnation, the gifts that you had, your south node comes, is the um, gifts in which that you have incarnated back with this time around. So you want to make sure that you look at your north node and your south node because that will tell you the gifts that you have this time around. So that will tell you your strengths. All right? At least an aspect of your strength. Look at where Jupiter is also in your chart. All right, because Jupiter is the planet of gifts and benevolence. All right? So let's say your, your um, Jupiter is in Gemini. That means you got a masterful gift of talk. You are eloquent. You, we need to put you up at the podium. <laughs> okay? All right? That's for somebody who has Jupiter in Gemini, because Gemini, normal uh, um, planet would be Mercury. Mercury is the communicator, right? But because Gemini, I mean, excuse me, because um, Gemini has now Jupiter there, all right, you have now been bestowed with even a greater skill of gap, as they say. That's the that's that's where you get the gift of gab from, all right. No fact that the Gemini is able to talk themselves out of maximum security prison. So if they got Jupiter there, then that just makes sure that they walking out probably with the warning of um holding them like this right here. <laughs> okay, all right. So this is what happens 
what's the science of the heart? And if the heart is lighter than the feather, what happens is that, which is the breath, then you no longer have to incarnate here. All right? You would go to a higher dimension, cosmic zone, um, a parent reality, density level, dimension, whatever term that you want to refer to, realm. All of these words shows that there are also other planets, all right, in which that has life on it, in which that if you correlate your frequency of consciousness to it, you can incarnate in one of those worlds where you might live 5,000 years, 50,000 years, or etc. as compared to just on Earth, where it went down from 969, almost 1,000 years like Methuselah, where it went down 930 years to Adam, until even though um, the first man even lived longer than his own um, grandson, <laughs> Methuselah, okay? He didn't even live longer than his grandson, <laughs> all right? And then it comes down to Genesis. In the book of Genesis, the 10th chapter, if I'm not mistaken, um, it said on um, the um, first verse, it said, my spirit shall not always strive with man, but yet 120 years. Then by the time we get to the book of Psalms, good God, they were talking about 70. long enough to know nothing. That's why you got to reincarnate over and over again because 70 years, the first time wasn't enough. So you might find people who get 25 incarnations, 100 incarnations, or even more. These are normally the people who refer to as old souls. All right? When, and, and, and they just know that they've been, you just know that they've been here before. You just know they've been here before. All right, so that is also a key. So now as we look at Libra, we come from Mayat, we come down to Scorpio. All right, Scorpio is Sarket. Sarket is the scorpion, all right? All right, or the scorpion goddess, but her physical form is Sarket, Sarket. All right, Sakir is the Scorpion King. This is where you get the movie Scorpion King with the rock in it. All right, anybody seen that? The Scorpion King? Well, that's who he was. He was the Sakir. All right, the feminine aspect is Sarket, which is the Scorpion. All right, the Scorpio has three symbols. All right, Scorpio has the Scorpion, has the Snake, and the Eagle, astrologically. The reason why Scorpio is the only sign that got all three, got these three animals, because it symbolizes that a Scorpio can dwell at their lower nature and sting someone, which is the scorpion, or they can bite someone, which is the snake, or they can fly and soar and be in their higher self. Okay? Because remember, Scorpio signifies the nose in the zodiac man. Scorpio signifies the nose. So that means that Scorpio being the nose means that by the science of breath, you can exchange from your lower self to your mid self to your higher self. Within the Taoist teachings, they teach us that there's three Dantians or three heavens, the lower Dantian, the mid Dantian, and the upper Dantian. The Christians refer to this upper Dantian as the upper room in the book of Acts. In the book of Acts, they speak of the upper room. That is where Jesus met his disciples, and he just appeared, and he breathed on them the breath of life, and they received the Holy Spirit. So it's talking about that through this breath. If you focus your energy here at the third eye, you can receive the Holy Spirit and inflame the third eye. All right? Symbolically, that third eye would give off a glow of light, emit a light in which that you can see the auric field or the halo over top of the head that looks like the sun. Hence, now you become the son of the sun or the son of God. Even if you're a woman, you become the son <laughs> of God. Right through that inflaming of Kundalini hitting that pineal gland and inflaming it because it's the serpentine fire and inflaming it to produce 
that magic genie. This is where we get genie, that genie in the lamp from. Rub that genie in the lamp. And if you rub that genie in the lamp, you get three wishes. By inflaming the soul crystal, awakening it, and developing that golden light over top of your head, which is that sun disk, or halo. And it's no question that it's halo. The word halo within Latin means sun. It comes from the Greek word helios, all right, which means sun, which comes from Heru, which is the ancient comedic name for sun. It also means time. It also means hour, as in, oh, it's um seven o'clock. That's the um that's what time you gonna be. That's the hour. The word Horus is where we get the word hour from. Is the Greek rendition of the word Horus or Heru. Okay, so this is how this all correlates. So, Scorpio symbolizes that principle of being able to transform from the depths of hell into the heights of heaven through the breath. Because, once again, Scorpio symbolizes the nose principle. All right, so there's a new planet since 1997 that have come in between Scorpio and Sagittarius. Right? The ancient comedic name for it is called Imhotep. The Greek name, the Greco Latin name, is called Officius. Officius, which means the serpent wrestler. The serpent wrestler. All right? But we know that over during the third dynastic period, you had Imhotep who actually lived. This is the only the only zodiac sign of an actual living person that we have discovered. Imhotep actually lived during the third dynastic period, and he was the prime visor. All right? His position was like that of the Pope today on the planet. All right? He was actually like the first Messiah in that regard. If you go and read the tales, all right? He sat under. Dozer, or Zozer, who was the um, third dynastic um, king during that time period, all right, or Pharaoh, all right, or Nagu, as we refer to him as. And so, we are looking at this new zodiac sign that have come in between Scorpio and Sagittarius now, since 1997. This don't affect those who was born before 1997. It only affects those who was born after 1997 with this zodiac sign now coming into play. As it comes more into play, the calendar is going to have to change to 13 months and 28 days instead of 12 months. All right? We're going to go to 13 months and 28 days. Now we know 12 months and off and on half is 30, half is 31. But it's going to change to 28 days, 13 months. All right? That's what's going on. Now, now we have Sagittarius. Sagittarius is Shu, that breath that we talked about earlier. All right? He's the archer. That's Sagittarius, is the archer. All right? The bow and arrow. Shoot straight, all right? Symbolic to the breath itself, all right? So now we're looking at Sagittarius. Sagittarius ruling planet is Jupiter. Ruling planet is Jupiter, all right? That's the, that's the planet in his natal position, is Jupiter, all right? So... As we come down, we now go to Capricorn, all right? Capricorn is the goat of Mendez, all right? This is where they get the Baphomet symbol from, but it's called the goat of Mendez, all right? Ancient comedic symbol, all right? Now, Capricorn are the organizers of the Zodiac. They also I use, all right? Everything about a Capricorn is about, I can use that. 
all right? In a higher nature means I can use it. In a lower nature might mean I can abuse that, all right? But once again, let's go down now. We're going down to Aquarius. Aquarius, ancient comedic symbol or comedic, uh, Temerian um, would be um, Heru. Heru is the man. If you go to Ezekiel, if you go to Daniel, they speak about there was four beasts. And it says that one had a face of a lion, one had a face of an eagle, one had a face of a bull, and one had a face of a man. The one which is the face of the man is Aquarius. Okay? Now, if you go to the New Testament, Luke um, 22.10, the disciples asked Jesus what would befall them in the last days. And Jesus said, follow the man with the pitcher of water into his house. Now, anybody who knows astrology know that the 12 zodiac signs are called houses. The 12 positions are called houses. So there's one through 12 houses. And Jesus said, follow the man with the pitcher of water. Aquarius just happened to be the man with the pitcher of water pouring water for. On top of the next symbol or the next zodiac sign, which would be the fishes, which is Pisces. Pisces symbol or the comedic symbol is the crocodile who is known as Sebek. Sebek. All right? So these are the original symbols coming from out of ancient Kemet that we must utilize and go back to. All right? And not just use the Greek and Roman rendition of our ancient tales. Okay? So when we're doing actual, um, astrological charts, we must make sure that we... So for Aries, we saying it's Amen. For Gemini, we saying that it's all stars set. You see? For understand what I'm saying? So this is how we must begin to start doing our own astrological charts once again. All right? So um, we're going to go into now some of the aspects of the signs. All right? So we're looking at Aries. Aries are the pioneers. Um, they are said to be the leaders of the zodiac sign because they represent the head of the zodiac uh, man, or as some say, the mother Zodiacus. All right, mother Zodiacus. All right, which was taught to us by um, Grandmaster Baba um, C. Freeman L. All right, he calls the zodiac mother Zodiacus, which is also an ancient um, or goes back to the mother principle. Now. Aries being the leader or pioneer, that means they have the they have a good way of being able to start events, start situations, all right, start um, um, activities and certain things. However, they have poor finish. They are poor finishers. <laughs> okay, they are poor finishers. All right. Now, that's especially if they act. The beginning and at the middle of the chart. If they near the end, more towards the Taurus, and Taurus is like the um, um the Taurus, the um Taurus are more so like I guess you would say if you if we had the um hare and the rabbit race, <laughs> or, you know you know the hare is the rabbit and then you have the turtle, you know what I'm saying? And the rabbit starts off real fast and then the turtle is just like <laughs> that would be symbolic too, like the Taurus. So the Taurus have determination and it has focus, all right? So if the Aries is more towards the Taurus, then they have a better experience as far as being able to finish tasks, all right? All right? If they towards the end, all right? Now, if they towards the middle or the beginning, oh, boy, all right? The ones at the beginning, especially are the babies. They are really the baby Aries, all right? All right, the baby Aries, they, they want they want attention. 
they want it. <laughs> all right, all right. Sometimes it's me, myself, and I. <laughs> you know, right? It can be selfish. You know, but if you point it out to them rationally, they'll admit it. Okay, that is the thing about Aries. They will if if you because they represent the head of the zodiac. So if it's reasonable, they'll accept it. Right? And they'll try to correct it now. Not saying that they will always get it right, but they will try. Okay? And I can talk because I'm married, so don't get offended if you are. <laughs> All right? I know. But I'm at the end. But I know, but I know beginning, I know, I know little Aries, the baby Aries. I know oh boy. I got plenty of friends who are that. All right. So now we're looking at Taurus. Taurus, like we said, are determined. They're very determined. Um, um, they're about their money. Okay? Taurus Tor is all about their money. Right? That's just what it is. They know exactly how much they spend right, they every know. week on gas. That's it. They're right. Right. They're all the ones who will actually write that stuff down. And they take care of their stuff. <laughs> like, like they really care about the IRS. <laughs> <laughs> like they really care about the IRS. All right? But they will actually write that stuff down. All right? So, um, if you want um, someone to be an accountant, then you would get a Taurus. <laughs> all right? They make excellent accountants. All right? Um, you want to add on with the Aries and the Taurus? Well, Taurus is also, too, they're possessive. They are um, very possessive. Especially with their relationships. And they're private, so they're very observant. But don't be asking them a thousand questions, uh, but they right. will ask you. Right, because they're the first earth sound of sign. They are the first earth sign. All right? Aries, of course, is fire. So everything is birthed from out of the fire. All right? Next would be the earth. So Taurus is the earth. The first earth sign, Aries is the first fire sign. All right? So when you look, all right, if you are on the cusp, we know normally Aries goes from March 21st to April the 19th, April 20th. All right? Taurus goes from April 20th, 21st to what? May what? Exactly. To about May 19th, May 20th. All right? All right? So, that that is in some of the Zodiac books, you will find that difference. Even on older ones, you will find that sometimes it says that it was April the 18th. Not the 19th and not the 20th. But that is because of the shifts of the constellations over time. All right? So, of course, we have Gemini. All right? What you want to say about the Gemini? <laughs> um, yeah, like you said earlier, highly communicative. Yes. Um, also, too, they pay attention to great detail. Very um, observant. So they like to um, shower their mates with gifts. Um, but also, too, it's difficult because they have multiple aspects of themselves, and they right. don't understand why they need just one lover right. or one mate. That's what I know. Right. They two-faced it. <laughs> yeah. Different personalities. Right. Right. The, the, the dual personality. All right. Um, they, they would be the bipolar um, mm -hmm. um, aspect of the Zodiac. <laughs> Naturally. Not 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 under this E. Not under this E, <laughs> but Naturally. You get it? No, what you say? You don't know about it? <laughs> but naturally, they would be the bipolar of the zodiac sign. All right? Um, they can go from one extreme to the next, naturally. All right? And then talking about um, um, Ritalin and any other type of medicine that someone might be on, you know what I'm saying? Um, but they just have the knack of doing that. All right? So one minute, you might see them upset. Next minute, they smiling and laughing. You don't know what just happened. <laughs> but you're glad that they smiling and laughing. <laughs> you know what I mean? All right, so, um, of course, then we have cancer. Cancers are very moody. Oh, no, we not. Oh, no, right. well, y'all are sensitive. Oh, yeah. Y'all are sensitive. But, but y'all are very sensitive. Yeah. Very All sensitive. right? Y'all y'all able to pick up energies. Y'all yeah. able to I mean that's why the moods right you know, right. You pick up right. 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 you're picking up other people's energy. Right. Right. You take it right, right, exactly. 
Also, too, they're extremely either extremely neat or extremely messy. And they're yeah, also yeah. very conventional. Like, they'll iron their husband's clothes and, you know, make sure everything is just so in the home. Very nurturing. Right. They're also very nurturing because, actually, that's the hus husband tree or the harvesting time. All right? So, um, that is the time of harvesting in September. All right? Going into October. And if you want to tell a crowd of people something, get a Virgo to tell them. Right. Because they will pay attention to how it's being said. Right. They'll figure it out. All right? So that it doesn't offend anybody. Right. They're the tap. They, they, are the dip they are the diplomats. They are the diplomats of the Zodiac. They have tact. Yeah. All right? They have tact. They're the diplomats of the Zodiac. All right? Of Mother Zodiacitis. All right? So, here we go to Libra. Libra or the most charming of the zodiac. All right? They're the most charming. Matter of fact, it is said that Libras are nothing but Aries with charm. Yeah, Aries that went to charm school. Right. Uh, they are Aries. Okay. Right. They are Aries <laughs> who went to charm school. All right? So Libras are able to um, um, look at beautiful things. They, they have a, they, they normally have um, big eyes, yeah. you know, beautiful eyes. And so when they look at something, you know, they can, you know, they're the decorators. They can, you know, they're the ones who wish can put, you know, things together. You know? They came here to show the world beauty. Mesmerized. Right. They came right. Okay. Right. Right. We said mesmerize. Mm -hmm. yeah. Mesmerize. Right. Yeah, yeah, they can mesmerize you. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. Right. Because of the eyes. They can yeah, show you how they, they have to be of it. And, right. And sell it to everybody. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Right. So. Share their love. Huh? I said they want to share their love. They want to share their love. Well, mm -hmm. and because. Naturally, they would sit across from Aries, which would be Aries is the first house, so they would be what? This what? seven, right? Well, in between, right, going right there, exactly, going right there, uh, between the six and seven houses, right, exactly. In particular, the seven house, but they would be right there at that line. Exactly. Now, right, that is transformation, death and rebirth, transformation. Because the planet is, uh, for Scorpio, is Pluto. Pluto. Pluto is the planet of death. So hence, Scorpio takes on that um, influence also. Okay? And that is where you can find out how you're going to die. Right. On your eighth house. Right. Uh, mm -hmm. You can look on your chart. If you want to know. I know. Right. I know. Just let it go. Uh, right. Okay. <laughs> right. We'll, right. We'll, we'll let that go yeah, folks. Right. I, I, won't, I, I won't get too much into I that. Oh, you want to know? I'm scared. I'm not scared. Okay. I'm I'm scared. Scared. I'm I'm scared. Scared. All right. This is for those who ain't scared. The eighth house <laughs> is the house of Scorpio, <laughs> in which that Pluto is the planet of death and rebirth. <laughs> so what that means is, is that Scorpio has the ability in order to transform in life. Oh, excuse me. In life, <laughs> in this life, as well as in the next, all right? So Scorpio has the tendency also of being one of the signs that can understand the signs of reincarnation much better than most of the other zodiac signs. The eighth house. Right. The first house is Aries. The second house is Taurus. The third house is Gemini. The fourth house is Cancer. The fifth house is Leo. The sixth house is um, Virgo. Me out, Virgo. Seventh house Libra. is Libra. Eighth house is Scorpio. Ninth house is Sagittarius. Tenth house is Capricorn. Capricorn. Eleventh house is Aquarius. Twelfth house is Pisces. Now with Scorpio, um, they also too I noticed like scary movies. Oh, yeah. Scorpio. yeah. And Scorpios are also very revengeful. They do know how to get you back. Right. They can get you back. Yeah, wait, they can shoot. Yeah, they can take a secret to the grave. But it's three Scorpios. Right. It's three. Right. Go ahead, man. Well, see, I noticed that with Scorpios, they three. have a temper and that sometimes you have to yeah. tell them what they did because yeah. they've been in blame. Yeah. Oh, you know, you yeah. all on top of the table pulling the lights out the ceiling. And you're like, for real? <laughs> So they just blame. Of course, that's when you get them to that point. 
I give you a good example. Right, I give you a good example. I got a friend, my best friend in college, Scorpio. All right. Scorpio deals with the genitalia also, sexually. So he had an issue with this female, right, who always was getting at him about something and trying to um, um, hijack him in his plays and his, you know, in his shows because he was, you know, doing acting and, and everything on campus in the plays and stuff. All right. So what happened was that he decided that to get her back, he would poop in a box, wrap it up real nice, and send it to her. It sat on the desk of his teacher over the holidays of Christmas. And she got it. <laughs> but 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 once again, this was a Scorpio. Yeah, yeah. All right. <laughs> see, see, that's a Scorpio. Oh, it's all right. I have a lot of Scorpio in my Oh, oh, we get we get we get to her in a minute. All right, so. Next is Sagittarius, for those who are not born after 1997, right? All right? I'm going to get back to Officius, which is Imhotep, in a minute after we finish. All right? But Sagittarius. Sagittarius are, I guess you would say, the the uh, the laughers. They, they like to laugh. You know, comedian. You know, they can be the comedians of the Zodiac song. All right, they love to laugh, they love to tell jokes. You know, they also are very straightforward. That's why that's why you see the bow at, on bow and the arrow. They're very straightforward. You know, so if you want to know something, they will bluntly say what it is. So uh, we don't know if you want to ask them, Sagittarius, um, how they feel about you. <laughs> or they will actually come out and say what you did not think they were going to say. All right, this is a sad. All right, they have that tendency. But even then, they can still be tactful about it somewhat. All right, but they will say what is on their mind. They're very straightforward when it comes to that. All right, then of course, we with have, Sagittarius, they also be known when people are lying. Right. Because they have mastered that art. It's like a chemical imbalance or something. When somebody lying, they're like, oh, that's a lie. <laughs> <laughs> Indeed. All right, so now we have. Capricorn. They fight being deceitful because they see people's weaknesses. They, is, they but, fight being deceitful. They fight being deceitful uh -huh. Uh -huh. because they can see people's weaknesses. But there's also a difference between a December Capricorn and a January Capricorn. True. Go to that. Man. That's yeah. true. It's I easier for the January Capricorns. They're very sensitive. Yeah, my mom. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Yeah, and they also are very giving. Mm -hmm. My mom. Uh -huh. They are the one that's there. Is this I use? Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And the December uh, Capricorn? I mean, yeah. yeah. The December Capricorn, I know, is a more deceitful. That's yeah, they are. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, they are. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, yeah. <laughs> That's what I know. Uh, yeah. That's the right. one. Yeah, so, then we have Aquarius. Aquarius. And they don't like weakness either. Yeah. They because when like they were little, they cried a lot because they are so sensitive. Now, who's that? The sensitive Capricorn. The December Capricorn. Capricorn. The December Capricorn. Oh, That's about that. Right, well, but, they, but they mushy inside. Yeah, so they're they very mushy. Right. Yeah. Bingo. Yeah. Bingo. Yeah. But they don't want to look. Because the key we word is they don't it. want to look weak. But it was because when they were little, they were crying all the time. That's that baby that's crying all the time. And you would get a beating, and I would not cry. Oh, really? Well, that's good. You're in December or January. You're the you January. Yeah, see, there you go. See, you you got that Aquarius. You stubborn. Yeah, well, y'all are y'all are the rebellious ones, even though y'all are great friends, very intelligent. And I noticed Aquarius is y'all are reading three, four books at a time. And it seems like when y'all dream, y'all be flying. That's what I noticed. Right. So now we have Aquarius. Aquarius. They are the humanitarians of the zodiac sign. All right. What I mean by that is that Aquarius can be friends with basically anybody in the zodiac sign. Yeah. 
All right? They can be friends with anybody in the Zodiac sign, basically. All right? They love people. They love travel. They love social engage, um, 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 affairs and, um, um, and engagements. They love that type of thing. Right, but they don't know. They don't like people asking them where they going and when they gonna come back because they right. air. They like to be free, right. and they love right. their calves rub. You want them to fall in love with you? Rub their calves. <laughs> okay. Well, the calves because that that is the body part. <laughs> that is the body part. The calves is the body part for Aquarius. Oh, is it? Yeah, that's the body part for Aquarius. What's the one for Cancer? Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. Right. The, the heart, the breast, the stomach, and right here, um, what they call you it? You need to visualize the energy di- going in and then coming the out. The diaphragm. Going in. The diaphragm, the heart, and the breast, breast oh. is is the that for the cancer? Okay. Right. Okay. Right. Okay. That'll work. The diaphragm, you the heart, the lower portion of the heart, the diaphragm, and the breast. Right, it's cancer. Now, of course, part of the breast, the shoulders, all right, is can is Gemini. All right, also the arms and hands is Gemini. So let's go through the body parts after I finish this, and we'll go and show everybody. The last is Pisces. Um, maybe you can speak on that. Come on, because you're the Pisces up in the house. Pisces, um, they man is very, they, they relationship is very important, and they will ditch their friends for their man. Um, what else? Pisces men. Um, Pisces are very. We don't mind wearing the same clothes, cause you know we just be like, okay, well, we can still wear that tomorrow. No. <laughs> <laughs> and my dad. Well, like, my dad and my husband, they're the um, fifth and the sixth, and they're both very spiddy. My husband is always oh, wow. ever since we've been been together since we've been in high school. In the matter of twenty something years. He's very spiffy, grew up in Atlanta, like my hats, like this, and my dad is like that as well. He still to the point where they say he wore dress shoes with, with gym pants. Oh, wow. That's how, I'm serious. <laughs> That's how spiffy they are. They, they're very perceived. Right. Now, so. now, Pisces, too, being that they are the mortars of the zodiac sign, they're the sacrifices. Mm-hmm. All right? Yeah. They will actually sacrifice themselves in order to help please others. All right? Because they, that's who they are. All right? So Pisces have that tendency. So that right. means that they often let people run over them. Not necessarily abuse them, no. but, no. but they'll let them use them. Yeah. Right, they will let them use yeah. them. That's true. Right. It's, it's especially, if it's for, especially if it's for a whole or... <laughs> it's to a certain extent. Yeah. Right, if it's, for a whole, if it's for a whole benefit, yeah. then they don't mind. Right. But if it's just to get at them personally... Yeah. Then that's the issue, and that's the problem they will, they will have. Yeah, they right, they will be protect. right. That's when they will be protected, that's right. and that's when you will see that water start that's turning right. into a um that to a um, um, tsunami. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. And right? very spiritual. That's, that's when that water going to turn very into a tsunami. Yeah. And you yeah. better get out of the way because they get ready to drown you. Yeah. <laughs> 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 yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. See, they get they get ready to drown. Right. Oh, right. You get ready to drown. Also, and right, the throat, which is the um, 
um, esophagus, as well as also the um, trachea, as well as. Um, I mean, you tell a Taurus that they have a big neck. Right. Yeah. yeah. They're right. They have yeah. thick necks. Exactly. Yeah. Yes. Tauruses have thick necks. That is that is absolutely correct. Oftentimes that's how they look. All right. So. Right. Yeah. Right. I know. Right. <laughs> <laughs> It wasn't like that when I was a teenager. They weren't before. All right. Now, for um, Virgo is the abdominal region. All right? The stomach and the small and large intestines and so forth and so on. All right? Um, for Libra is the kidneys. The kidneys is Libra. Right. Right. Libras have to drink a lot of water. Right. All right. Scorpio is the genitalia. All right. Sagittarius is the small of the back, which is the sacral bone area, and also the thighs or hips. All right. Um, Capricorn are the, are the knees. All right. Aquarius is the calves. Pisces, the feet. So that is all 12 zodiac signs, how it correlates to the zodiac man or what's called Mother Zodiacus. Okay? And when you are when you rule that energy, a lot of times you'll have issues with that area unless you're practicing Tai Chi, Qigong, and different yeah. things like that. You know, so like the Tauruses, they'll have issues with their thyroid or their throat. Right. Right. So, okay, so let's, let's go into that. That's where that energy comes right. in at. And it could be like an over excessive or blockage or just too much. So, there's different techniques that Dr. Ali's about to go well, through. Well, let's, let's get to that. Like cold feet. Uh -huh. Yes. Cold feet. Pisces. Right, exactly. Cold right. All right, so let's get to that. So, we're looking at the Zodiac Man, Mother Zodiacus. Let's look at the healing effects and also the afflicted areas of the body. All right, so. We're talking about Aries being ahead, then they might have brain issues, pineal, pituitary gland issues, hypothalamus, thalamus gland issues. All right? There are certain sounds that you can do in which that help heal that area. Right? The tone or the sound is the I sound. I. I sound help heals that all right also do t h o h do matter of fact the do sound decalcifies the pineal gland it can decalcify the pineal gland right that's for the head for the throat area the tone would be the a sound a Taurus, Taurus, oh, okay. right? But before I get there, there was a question. Somebody had a question. Yeah, um, I can taste everything between the first and the second. Yes. 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 Oh, we was going into um, the afflicted parts of possible of the of the person's body, but the whole body symbolizes the zodiac signs. All right. So we were saying that if you have an afflicted part. Then the sound in which that can be utilized are these healing cosmic sounds in which that can help heal the body of those afflicted areas and put the body back, and bring the body back into balance. Okay? All right, so also um, the head of every, we're talking about, you know, the head, so a person who have headaches, who have migraines, um, oftentimes the sound will be the E sound. E, the E sound, all right? If you have um, right here at the back of the head, you know what I'm saying? Um, back of the head, um, um, pains and, you know, those types of things at the back of the head, the sound is the Y sound. Y. So we're talking about the I sound, the those sound, all right, the Y sound, and the E sound. 
So the I, E, Y sound is for the head itself. And if the head is in balance, then the rest of the body is also. All right, which symbolizes the Aries. Now the next is the throat. The sound for the throat is the A sound. So if a person, um, um, let's say you have um, laryngitis, so you can't speak. So in your mind, you would resonate the A sound in your mind. All right? So outwardly, I would say A. In your mind, you would say Exactly, you can feel it, right. Exactly, right. That is also good for singers. Individuals who actually sing. The A sound can help get their throat, you know, to proper tune. All right, before they go on stage. All right, the A sound. A. So if they had any problems, thyroid gland issues like my wife was talking about. Um, 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 imbalance of thyroxine, which is a chemical a hormone that is produced from the thyroid gland, is an issue for thyroid glands, then the A sound would tune that back into frequency. All right, because the whole part of your your whole body is nothing more than megahertz and various hertz frequencies. So if you can tune that sound wave, bingo, the sounds to that particular area, then it will heal. Remove the, right? Remove the blockages, stagnated energy, and get the chi or prana or key flowing back properly, as we say, raw. Get the raw back, all right? So next would be the R sound, A-H, in which that resonates the heart, the lungs, all right, and the back portion, but it's oh. Exactly. And if you know the gorilla does that, you know why? Because they're beating on their thymus gland. The thymus gland sits directly above the heart, just like it does with us. So when you beat on your thymus gland, what happens is that that control, the, the um, thymus gland produces what is called white blood cells, which is for the lymphatic system. That counteracts the adrenaline, which is being produced from the adrenal glands, which sits on top of the kidneys. So by them beating on their chest is to counterbalance them going into fright mode and get ready to rip you apart. Mm -hmm. So that's why they beat on their chest is to make sure that the thymus gland is operating in order to counterbalance the nervousness that they're experiencing because you have threatened them. Okay? The R uh, sound. The R sound. Oh. Oh. <laughs> sound all right so so a Gemini having issues in this area all right also is depression the depression also right. deposits in the lungs right so depression it's... is deposited within the lungs the chemical in which that is because this every feeling that you have is a chemical response that is stored in the body and in particular organs all right in the brain is stress Break this down. In the brain, it is stress. All right? In the lungs, it's depression, disappointment. In the heart, it's hatred. You, you skipped the point. You, you skipped the point. Well, I'm just going through okay, some of the um, ones. In the liver, it's anger. Ooh. Mm -hmm. I, it feels in the kidneys, it's fear. Wow. In the genitalia, right? In the genitalia, yes. and that's why I hope for the people on dialysis. They, this country is ruled fear. by fear. Right. Yeah, yeah. Fear and anger. That's fear. Fear. And in the, let me say this: in the genitalia, yeah. Yeah. it's rejection. Yeah. I have a question though. Before yes. you go too far, um, when you were saying about with the eight, what popped, right. what popped in my head was the way, and it's not saying about race, mm -hmm. but the way. I would say the English or, mm -hmm. or the Caucasians would say they would call other people native right. when they go there because mostly they didn't really talk. But when they get ready to fight in war, you know that they chant. Right. If you know that they do a lot of the sound. Right. So did. That's right. what they did. And people Chow like they don't understand what they're doing, but that's what they were doing to get hyped, just like that right. ape. Well, so if it's everybody not just an ape, it's an animal thing. Right. It's an animal thing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And if everybody remembers mm -hmm. uh, what we talked about, 1977, Earth, Wind, and Fire, the Serpentine joint. 
of the All in All album, then y'all also remember A E I O U U. And sometimes why? That's the vowels. Why you think the vowels were used? The vowels is what changes the consonants. The words is called consonant. Hold up. Const hold up. The root of consonant is the word constant. The word constant, by definition, means that which remains the same. So what changes the frequency in the word is the vowel. Vowel. What is a vowel? Right. What is a vowel? Yeah. A vowel is a promise. So it's the change. A vowel is a oath. A vowel is an oath. A vowel is sacred. And what is L in Hebrew? L means God. Thank you. So that means that the word vowel means the sacred word of God. Or the sacred sound of God. That's a vowel. It's a sacred tone or sacred sound of God. Vowel L. And they're not going to teach it to you in school because they don't want us to bypass. They throw stuff to us and don't realize that they teach us, but they're not teaching us what is really beautiful. Bingo. And the reason why it's plain sight. But right. You know, but that's yeah, and that's what I'm saying. Unless you're talking about it, learning. just like I said again, going back to tribal, before they start mixing everybody up, they, they they were learning it. They were teaching us to this. So that's why when everybody going out to war or whatever to battle, they didn't have to tell everybody do this, do this, do this because it was a natural thing. Right. And them now that they're teaching kids, they're not teaching kids to go towards their natural thing. Yeah. So mm -hmm. that's why it's so much confusion, so much sickness. You know what I'm saying? They're and the reason why they're not... They get ready. Yeah. Right. They get ready. Yeah. Yeah. So we use vowels to uh, organs. Bingo. Yeah. 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 And you And check this out. You have seven endocrine glands, seven major endocrine glands, your pineal gland, pituitary gland, your thyroid, parathyroid glands, your thymus gland, all right, your spleen, pancreas, as well as also your genitalia, which within a woman is, well, the adrenal glands and also the genitalia, which is what? The uterus and ovaries, and for the man, the testes and prostate. These are the seven major endocrine glands or ductless glands, which also produces hormones. This is what keeps you hormonally balanced. So as you go to war, you can't be sick. <laughs> you got to be at your, at your height. So you do the vows in order to get you in tune and keep you in tune as you wage your war, because otherwise you would die. Because your body will overload from all the adrenaline. You see? Your body will overload you with all the adrenaline. And you can possibly die. Or you can channel it like a mother who just ripped the damn going hinges off and lifted the car off her son. The choice is yours. All right? But that's what adrenaline can do for you. Okay? So... Lungs. You see, the sound yes. for the lungs. The sound for the lungs is the ah sound. A H. Ah. Oh. So if you have bronchitis, mm -hmm. asthma, um, emphysema, um, any problem with the lungs, that's what you can do. Is the ah sound. All right. Next is for the liver. All right. Even though it's not necessarily a vowel, but the liver stores anger. One outburst mm. of anger shuts down your whole immune system for six hours. Mm. Mm. I'm going to say that one more time. Mm. One minute outburst of anger shuts down your whole immune system for six hours. That means you are open for six hours for anything to come into your auric field. Mm. So in order to eliminate anger, you do just like you would if, you was, if somebody was talking real loud in the library. You turn around and say, shh. That's why the word shit bingo. feels so good. That's why it feels yeah. so good. Yeah. Yeah. That's why. Yeah, that, that's why. There you go. There you go. There you go. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. Exactly. 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 You releasing that anger. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You releasing that anger. Right. That's right. Yeah. Because it gets frustrating on this planet. But she said one outburst of anger. So shit is is an out. 
numbers, though, isn't okay. it? True. Yeah, but, 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 so we but, but is the, ca- down our, but is, uh, but is the uh, counterbalance yeah. to that yeah. outburst? Okay, well, um, so yeah. it's the counterbalance yeah. to that outburst. Just, just like, action. just like we said yeah. with the eight, <laughs> right? <laughs> just <laughs> right, right. Something else made you upset, yeah. but you saying she was just yeah. a yeah. was just a release of that anger. Okay, I'm with you. You see, right, right, right. Somebody else made you upset, right? Instead of holding it in, you said. And you get it out. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> 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 Is that a release also? Well, fuck, that? That, well fuck came from fornication under, under the, the consent of the king. Of the king. Yeah, right. You had to get permission to fuck. Right, from the king oh, to have yeah. sex. Oh, right, that was a, a 15th century. Um, what, and actually, you know, like you know, like when you go to the hotel and they have do not disturb right. on the sign now, yeah. you that was fuck. actually F-U-C-K. Mm-hmm. That was fornication under the consent of the king. So now they could um, go and have sex by permission of the king, because he would be the authority of God on earth. Yeah, Just like the Pope yeah. is claiming to be the vicar of yeah. Christ to this very day. Okay? Cause and effect. Cause and effect. Exactly. <laughs> All right? So, so now, that was for the liver. All right? For the kidneys is A lot of people' kidneys are shutting down, right. so and they're easy to heal. Um, right. Lemon, natural lemon juice, yeah. also yeah. tapping them. Yeah, and remember when we were little, we used to go like this. Y'all remember yeah. when we used to go like this? Yeah. Yeah. And also the kidney massage. What you right. doing? Hitting your uh, kidneys with your yep. uh huh. You just yep. Hit. You remember? Yeah. We just used to stand there and do oh, it. Yes. Uh. All right. So you say that's for fear? Huh? Yeah. I, I want to say something about that. Um, I'm I'm a September 11th survivor. Yeah. I'm a veteran. Oh, wow. um, and I suffer from PTSD. I'm sure. And um, since since that. I've been having a lot of problems. Like I have lower back pain right. and issues, and that was that's the thing that has gone on. Like you said, holding the blockage in. Mm-hmm. Since going through that, my son is six years old, and that's why it's a bad problem with my head section mm-hmm. because I hold a lot of fear, even coming out around me. Can because, can can you bend? No, okay. and lifting is is very. That's that's when you were saying that about the adrenaline ain't going the in. Right. PTSD is. Everything is like it's a fight to exactly. the point where I think I blocked my family out for like four years. Right. Mm-hmm. For four years, I changed the address, everything. And right. Because they couldn't, didn't understand what I was going through. But that is so true because when I started having fear, when I was coming here for the the baby shower, right. and I know I was going to be around a lot more people, like feeling like this, I, I got to have you close to the exit. Mm-hmm. And if not, in a new place, that right. fear come in and I start having pain. Right. So it's true what you're saying, but when I rub it and do things of that nature, or um, and because I also go to sleep with different meditations. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah. So it, that's very true. Yes. 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 And also the neck one for your digestive system is the ha sound. H A H. Ha. And then also rubbing your mouth. It feels so good to rub. Right. 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 Yeah. Right. Right. This, this, is, this, is, this, is, this is for this area right here. Right. Now, for this area is what my wife is going is the O sound. Okay. Oh. You know, remember you was a kid, you went to your mom, you're like, oh. And your mom kissed you, and then all of a sudden you back outside playing the game. But the O sound was the natural response for when you had a tummy ache. So it's the same. Nothing changed from childhood to adulthood. You just forget that that's what you used to do. But now you bring it back and oh. Okay? For the genitalia, all right, which goes down to the feet. So this includes Capricorn, Aquarius, and Pisces, all right? Right. This area here is Scorpio, and this area here is Sagittarius. So the old sound hits all of them. All right. 
into going into the U sound, which hits every area that we just went over. So the U sound is U. The U sound. All right. You want to get it kind of bass, kind of kind of bassy because it's like a didgeridoo. Anybody heard of a didgeridoo? Yeah. All right. So you blow into the didgeridoo. So you want you and that taps into the genitalia, the um the thighs, the hips, the knees, the the bone structure, and the feet. All right. So these are the seven tones that heal every part of your physical body, based on the zodiacal signs of Mother Zodiacus. All right, so it's what? I, E, Y, A, A, Ha, Ka, Sh, O, U. So they tell you that the vowels are what? A, E, I, O, U, and Y. But it's also an H. W. Right. It's also H. All right? So these are the vowels, because just like the word hour, you can say it's spelled H O U R or O U R. So the H also becomes a vowel. All right? So those are the seven tones that heals your body is A E I O U Y H. Those are the seven vowels. Yes. O M is what Let me explain. The universal tone, right. Um, that is the sound that produced the universe into existence based from the Vedic and Sanskrit teachings. The yogis teach that the own sound uh, manifested everything that we can see, touch, taste, and smell, as well as resonates in the invisible etheric plane. Is the own sound. The same sound in which that you hear bumblebees make bees. The same um, that makes um, uh, um, uh, um, What's Dragonfly, the Dragonflies and mosquitoes and flies and gnats. Right. That. <coughs> that sound. And it's like yeah. a vacuum. Right. Right. That, that, that buzzing sensation is actually is the own sound. So you say, oh. Now Christians say this at the end of their prayers. When you get called up to the altar and everybody put their hands together and Bishop or pastor, he says the prayer. Everybody said in. Amen. Do they not? Yeah. What were they saying? Oh, oh. Yeah. Same sound that the ancients teach. This is why everybody say amen at the end of their prayers. Muslims, Christians, right? Jews. Muslim, Christians, Jews, Hebrews, Israelites. Amen. Amen. Right. Amen. Amen. Right. Same. Same word. Whether you speak Arabic, Hebrew, or English, <laughs> how is that? Okay. And it's all ancient comedic, based on Amen Ra or Amen. We call Amen Ra, which means the hidden force. So what you say with amen, uh, om, the I, or the A-U-M, or O-M tone, is you're tapping into the hidden force. The invisible force, the unseen, is what you're tapping into. So when Christians say amen, now they just say, well, that means so be it. Right, it means so be it. But that means that you're manifesting something from the invisible plane into the visible plane. It's invisible, and you're trying to make it manifest into the visible. That's what that means. All right, yes. So what about like when you like do the status fine you say um Bingo. Like right. 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 Same thing. Exactly. Right. That's the first part of it. Uh, and then mm, so ah uh, mm, is the own sound. Right? Because it's spelled both ways. A U M O L. The A-U-M is the feminine aspect, and the O-M is the masculine aspect of the same tone or frequency that produced the universe into existence. And that's why home has meaning, because you 
Bingo. You feel? Oh. Exactly. 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 Beautiful. Beautiful. That's why. All right? And then, like we said, y'all think about this. All right? This is how it all correlates. This information all correlates. All right? Any other questions? Well, based on their conscious level, they could have risen above their zodiac sign because there's three nerves or three pair of nerves in your brain, which is called your cranial nerves, in which that you have 12 pairs of cranial nerves that sit around the pineal gland in your brain. Those 12 pair of cranial nerves are activated off of the zodiac principle. However, for a person who don't display, that means that they could have actually enlightened all 12 pair of cranial nerves, so thus they encompass all of the zodiac signs. So they're no longer operating or at just their own zodiac sign, or some operate at the um, sun sign, the moon sign, and also what's called the rising or ascendant sign. So you're no longer operating at that level. You no longer have the influences of the zodiac, because there's a way to get above the zodiacal influences by activation of the three last pair of cranial nerves in your brain. So they no longer will demonstrate or act like any of the signs, for they have encompassed all of them. Okay. Yes. Okay. I've heard about how I don't understand how the When a sign rules a house, mm -hmm. if the house, you have a planet in a house, is it? No, it's not normally the natal sign or the natal um, zodiac sign. So, for example, the first house would be Aries, but Aries might not be the first um, planet in your first house. May not house. be your sun sign. Right, might not be right. because, but that's And it's because of the constant rotation. Bingo. So you might end up with... Um, Capricorn in the first house. But the first natal house would be that of Aries. But you got Capricorn there. Yeah. So that's <laughs> what your rotation was. Right. So right. So what that means is that all right, you now went over Capricorn. Capricorn are the organizers of the Zodiac. So now they can take the temperament of the Aries, who is the pioneers, right? Who normally don't who can start a task but don't might not necessarily finish the task, but because Capricorn is there. They can finish it because they can organize. They follow the bingo. They can right. They can organize it and put it together. Okay. Yes. Um, what is the difference between Aries and Capricorn? Aries is the organizer. Right. I went over that earlier. Okay. I'm saying. Uh, mm -hmm. Right. 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 So are we two passing signs? Yes. Right. In which the great incarnation. Yes, that is the point. So that is the point. So, so, so like, this is what the sister just asked me. What happens when a person don't display any characteristics to their zodiac sign? The reason why is because, like we said, there's 12 pair of cranial nerves that sits around the pineal gland in the brain. So the same reflection that we see externally is the exact same reflection under the dome of the skull. All right? Yeah. And... You, those 12 pair of cranial nerves that sits around the pineal gland are symbolic to like Jesus Christ at the Last Supper or King Arthur and the 12 knights at the round table. Or the zodiac sign reflected with the, um, with the sun and it takes every, um, every 25,928 um, years to go around all 12 zodiac signs. Through all 12 zodiac signs. Alright, so um, that same reflection, you can illuminate yourself, like we said, with the last three pair of cranial nerves and no longer have the influence of what's called the clock of destiny or the rule of destiny, which is the zodiac influence. You no longer, right, you are now above it. And now no longer have to incarnate because for those who are not able to master that, they're the ones who have to incarnate once again. Okay, just the whole point where I gave the illustration about the heart being weighed against the feather. Okay. All right? Is that what you call the circle of time? Yes. You're now outside the circle of time. Right. Right. Exactly. You are now.
now outside the circle of time. Time is based on the will of life, which is the zodiac, the zodiac will, or what is also called the clock of destiny. All right? So as long as you are in it, you have those influences. But once you illuminate those three last pair of cranial nerves, then you're no longer part of that um, influence. Right? You no longer show those attributes. You are now above that, and as you stated, outside the rule of law or the time um, cycle. Yes. Like eight house reveal, how I'm doing that right now. You said with the eight house to what? No, the eight house reveal, like he's talking about the eight house being the life and death. Right. Like eight house, how eight house shows how I'm doing, I guess you can say, according to that clock and that cycle. All right, so let's let's go through um, the influence of each of the um, houses. Of the houses. All right, because the houses tell you a story too. All right. Uh, like you said, Aries is the pioneer. The um, you know, the pioneer house, all right, great starter, all right. Taurus is, let's say, um, Taurus is what? What would you say? Well, Taurus I would say the second house is what she's supposed to be doing financially. Right. Let's say it's dealing with, like we said earlier with the money aspect, so finances, all right. So that would be the second house, um, attribute, all right. Third house, that would be what communication. All right, fourth house stability was the stability, right? Foundation, right? Marvel. Right, right. You get that, All right? The fifth house, which is Leo, would be what? Creativity. Yeah, yeah. Say it again house of creativity, creativity, right? Exactly. Influences, um, which is based on creativity as well as also on design. All right, all right. Then we get what. Um, the seventh house. The sixth house. Well, sixth, sixth house, excuse me. Which would be Virgo. Right? Alright, so Virgo is what? The Maturity, tree. purity. Security, right, perfection. Um, um, dealing with harvesting. You know, you reap what you sow. So they they the, they the sowers um, of the zodiac sign. Also, they are, um, um, they are part of the nurturing aspect in a sense also. All right. Um, then of course we have the seventh house. Um, the seventh house, which is Libra, which deals with partnership. Which deals with partnership, relationship. Yeah. All right. All of that is partnership and relationships. All right. Then we have the eighth house. All right. The eighth house deals with what transformation. Here, rebirth, transformation. Okay. The ninth house, which is what Sagittarius, deals with what Bingo. Philosophy. Exactly. Exactly. There's more philosophy and also um, religion, thinking, tribal. religion, right, tribal, right. All of that tribal. is part of Sagittarius, right? The 10th house, all right, business, all right? It ain't personal, it's business, son. <laughs> that, that's, that's, the, that's the 10th house. It's based on business, organization, Capricorn, all right? The 11th house, which is Aquarius, is based on friendship. Humanitarianism, all right? Getting the word, you know what I'm saying? Um, um, not getting the word out per se, but taking the word and utilizing it and spreading it amongst their peers. Fishermen of men. All right, the fishermen of men, exactly, in a sense. As we go into Pisces, in which that Pisces are spirituality. Um, the spirituality. They're the ones in which they are the sacrificers. They are all called the mortars um, of the zodiac sign, all right? Um, I don't like using that word, but, and also they're the most spiritual in the sense that um, they can be on their last, if you come back as a Pisces in this time, then you could possibly be on your last incarnation. So you don't have to incarnate any longer after this life if you master it. <laughs> yes, if you're a Pisces, then you do not have to reincarnate after this life if you get this right. You're on your last incarnation. That's how you, that's why you came as a Pisces. You're on your last incarnation. Right. All right. So this is that's the that's the signs of each of the houses. So now, like we say, you might not necessarily have the natal planet in in one of those houses. All right. Like we said, Aries is the first house, but you might not have Aries in the first house. Which the first house deals with what? Say it again. Leadership. Pioneer. Right. So. So let's say 
what happens, let's say if you have, um, let's say you have cancer in the first house. So cancer is the mother or nurturer of the zodiac sign. Yes. So now. That's how you would, lead. Right. So how would she lead? Yeah, with the heart. Yeah. Bingo. Yeah. She would oh lead with the heart. Mm -hmm. Exactly. She would have to show love as her leading quality. Right. No and, and, and the structure, right. <laughs> and be the pioneer. <laughs> right. She would be the pioneer. It means that she would go where nobody else is going. We even angels have feared the track. Because that's the Aries. Right? So that is what she would have. She would use her love and go where no, where no one else has ever gone before. Right? She could be the Dr. Drew, Charles Drew, right? Um, of, of the Zodiac song. Right? Mm -hmm. but, um, but, um, since you're saying that, um, what about Leo? Then in, um, mm -hmm. How would that Right. Same. Leo. Now, now, both are fire signs. Yeah. That, that's me. That's why I said <laughs> All right. Right, both the fire signs. So Leo, of course, qualities is that of of of, of queen and kingship, mm -hmm. royalty. Royalty. Mm -hmm. So if they have that in Aries, good God Almighty, they have an air about them. Right. They right. That is that is an air. Oh, but, but, but I'm just saying. It, don't, it don't matter what you think. <laughs> it's how others think. perceive oh, you. Oh, okay. That's right. It's that's how that. others perceive it's you. It's what's shown. It's what's seen. Right. Right. You're not going right. to take anything. Bingo, mm -hmm. bingo. So you will lead with the qualities of royalty. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? With, with uh, being able to say, no, I don't like that. Or, yeah, no, this should be like enough. this. Mm -hmm. You know, and you're the one that wish that would point out the inconsistencies. You know, and so being a pioneer, that means that you have the quality in order to um, do something very dynamic because, you know, if Leo is the king and queen royalty of the zodiac and then is in Aries, then we're looking at something in which that could be very powerful if you utilize it. If you utilize it correctly. Right. And that's what I was about to say. What, what you just said, which what she was, was based on what she was saying, she said something just very, very important. This mm -hmm. is my aunt who's seven years older than me. Mm -hmm. And like you said, when they were younger, they don't realize the power that they sustain. And now that she's older, like she said, she does act very shy, whatever. But just like you said, what she's supposed to be stepping in, she's going against what she, you know, don't know it. But right. once she mastered it and she learned what it, it is, like she will go yeah, above it because right. she mastered it when she stepped into her, what, what her, her calling. When well, she That's steps right. into her royalty. That's what right. it is. I right now, right now, she <laughs> might have a little tendency of the shyness because yeah, that's, yeah. that's the cowardly lioness, you know what I'm saying, aspect. She got to that point right. yet. She got to right. master it. It's all right. <laughs> yeah. But when she master it, you know, watch yeah, out. bingo, watch out. Okay, you got Obama, Obama birthday? Yeah. Right. <laughs> right. You can run the whole free world. Yes, right. Right. <laughs> right. 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 So, yeah. you August the 4th, all right? So, same as Barack Obama, President Barack Obama. That's very powerful, and that's what I mean by taking it to that next level, all right? I'm pretty sure Obama, he was shy in college and everything. He didn't really say too much. Even when you watch the movies, he said that portrayal of him was very truthful, you know, that he wasn't really very sure. talkative. He was shy, you know what I'm saying? But then, right, but then next thing you know, he come pimping in the White House. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So, so, so that's so, so that's that's the that's the dynamics in which that can take place once you come into the fulfillment of Le um, Leo in Aries. Right, right, right. Okay. Yes. I found in my uh, research of the science of science that they say that whatever sign you die in. Mm -hmm. Somewhat, but I can give you a good example. In order to know the last sign that you were in your last incarnation, look at your north node. Yeah, you just say it because when you come back in the south is what you right. have to do now. Mm -hmm. Bingo. And the north is what you were before. What you were before. Yeah, you did say that. Yeah. Right. Yeah, I heard that. Your north node tells you who you were and what you were doing before, the gifts that you had, all right, as well as also 
the sign that you were under in your last incarnation. Like, for example, I was a Virgo in my last incarnation. Okay? I was a Virgo. I still have traits of that Virgo now because everything I do, I got to detail it in almost to perfection. I still got that trait about me, even though that Virgo was my last joint. <laughs> I'm this time in the Aries. But then you are now, yeah. Right. So it's like a little bit of Bingo. Oh, yeah. Bingo. So you still have influences from yeah. your last incarnation. No. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, look at the chart. Your you birth day, your birth time, your, and your, your birth place. Okay. Say it again. Say yep. it again. Yep, you use your birth day, your birth time, and your birth place. Right. That's how. That's what and you that's use what in order to get where your moon was, your right. sun was, and then you use the angles. It'll be a ninety degree angle or a trine. Trines are different um, aspects that make things easy for you, where it would be harder for someone else. Mm -hmm. gotcha. Squares is something you have to learn. If you don't, it's gonna keep on coming back right. harder. Right. Yeah. So, so how do you learn how to read this chart? You first, you got to have have one done, and then just like what I basically did with everybody. Okay, well, so bring that's, it that's tomorrow, we'll and we'll go over it. Bring it. Bring it tomorrow. Bring it tomorrow. Yeah, tomorrow. Yeah, I think, early. Right. I think we're we're gonna have to whatever time they, tomorrow, what, what time they open. Tomorrow. What time they open? Oh, oh, okay. Okay. But Touch we're going to be here all day. Yeah, what, what time are we going to do it? Tomorrow. Excuse me. Well, would you prefer... I don't know. Like, I'm going to say about noon. About noon? Okay, sounds good. But we'll be here at noon. So we can come any time between noon and noon? Yes. Okay. There we go. We'll be sitting out here, okay? And what are you charging? Do you charge it? I told him it was a donation. Yeah, we do a donation. Okay. I know, right? <laughs> Thank you guys. Y'all are a beautiful energy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Same. <laughs> oh, it's a good question. I know you don't have your hand up. Oh, no, I'm just. Stretching. Yeah. Come on. Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> I was like, wow. I, and I was saying to him earlier, I was like, so this is what, I was like, wow, I've been here before. So this is, and he said, yeah, I've done this before. Like, yeah. it's yeah. deja vu. feel like you did it. Right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Now, that's your dream. Yes. And right. I used to do that when I was younger. Right. That's two not, I'm, I'm glad we got into that. It's two aspects. Uh -huh. so, because we have different aspects of ourselves. Your eyes are closed, but yet you can see colors and vivid dreams. Yeah, right. We have more than just our physical aspect. And I feel like that's our solution in this problem of being melanated. Uh -huh. Because your dreams tell you what will happen before they happen. Some people's are symbolic. Some people's is literal. Um, and then also, too, it'll tell you how to be successful. Um, Oprah Winfrey had a notebook called Dreams Work. And she wrote down exactly what she wanted to yeah. happen in her I life. Yeah, and y'all see that. how, see? Y'all yeah. see how successful that. she is. And remember, we used to do spelling. We used to write it all out. Every Friday, we had a spelling test. Yeah. Yeah. It was a spell. You was casting a spell for yourself. Yeah. Yeah. You know, um, a lot yeah. more, we, we had that discussion with my kids, because now that the computer is out, mm -hmm. they are constantly going right. on. And I know a lot of people, when they write, like I tell them, I say, how do you write, just start writing out your head? Why don't you write it down? With me, even though I have a phone right here, and I, I'm IT as well, I still take notes, and I have notes everywhere. I write it down, and they ask me, my girlfriends ask me, I would always seem like I was older than what I was. I've been married since I was 19. I had my first shot at 15, but I graduated with honors in fourth of my class. Oh, I went to college for engineering, civil mechanics, with double major, got to win military, all these things. And they said, how you can do it with your kids or whatever, and mansion and husband and stuff like that. I'm constantly writing in there, and I know it sticks in my head. If I see it, write it down. If I listen to you, write it down. And it, it stays with me more than me typing it somewhere right. or typing it in my phone. Right. I still do old school. Right. Mm -hmm. And so I understand that. It's better. Yeah. yeah. Because yeah. like, yeah. you back. actually did. No, right. not this. I'm just saying. Okay. No, in your mind. Oh, I did. Yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. That's why it's very important for us to write down our dreams. That's right. Yeah. I can barely remember. Well, then what you do? What you do is you put your head back in the pillow and slow down breathing, Meditate and it'll come back to you. Meditate on it. I give you a good example. Let me say this. All right. So, when you have your day job with experience, what is going on is it's going right back to But when you have had them, what is going on is that. Your soul leaves your body at night. It's called astral travel. And what happens is that you go on alternate, uh, alternate um, timelines. You go to alternated timelines. 
parallel timeline mm -hmm. of possible aspects that could actually happen. All right? You have gone, your soul have gone before you into a future timeline. And so you actually was participating in dream wise of what was taking place. Now your soul comes back to your body, and when you go through that experience, you say, Oh, snap. So there you go. Yeah. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Hold on. Now, what I'm supposed to do in this, you know, in this, you know what I'm saying? Now, the thing is that if you did not remember it, you would have probably had to do something. It would have been a learning lesson. That's right. Had to, learn it again. Yeah. had to learn it again. Yeah. But because yeah. you recognized it, guess what happened? You passed that test and you did not have to go through it and everything was straight. Yeah. But you still felt that same vibe because you did that already. And there's, that's the first, that's a, that's one aspect. Then there's also another aspect is that you have had many incarnations. So the thing is, is that, right, so the thing is, is that all your incarnations is stored up in what is called the oversoul, all right? The oversoul, all right? Um, your oversoul, personable oversoul collection is stored at the back of the head, which is called the medulla oblongata. Yeah. Right? That is where your past lives are stored at, as well as also your ability in order to have what's called photographic memory. That's right. All right? This is why they That's tell you to tap. Said, this is why they tap at the back of the head. Right. 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 Oh, wow. When you practice, when you practice you cheek gun, right. when you practice cheek gun or tai chi, oh. the masters will tell you to tap right back here at the back of the head, like this, right here. Mm -hmm. You know, in order dealing to, with your scientists. Right. In order to scarify that area. Right, it's right under the knot, you know, that part, like if you look at the back of Tupac's head, mm -hmm. you see that knot right there, like mm -hmm. I'm knotting, <laughs> and it's right there, right there, that part, right there, you just tap. And so what happens is that by tapping, you begin to have access to your okay. last incarnation. What? Uh, Sarah will tell you everything. Sarah will tell you. Okay. Oh, yeah. So will. Sarah will tell you everything. So Sarah will. Sarah will. Right, which is also connected to, right, right underneath the cerebellum. Right, it is the brainstem, which is on the side of the brainstem, is your medulla oblongata. And that medulla oblongata is the storage place of your incarnation, what is called your, your personal Akashic records. Your personal Akashic records, or Akasha. Right, that's your Akasha records. Right, so this is where your past life is stored at. So by tapping it, you can tap into your last incarnation. So if you have a problem, Guess what? You go and ask your last one of your last incarnations. You no, know, they had this earthly existence before. So yeah. what did they do? You know what I'm saying? In order to get through, you know what I'm saying? This 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 situation. So what do you? So what do you tap into the fall asleep? I mean, what? what no, no, you just tap. You tap three times. You tap um, um twenty five times three times a day. And then you go when you go to sleep. And then you, you go to sleep. You will start to have remembrance of your last incarnation, things that you've gone through, and everything. Or you yeah. could just sit there with your eyes closed, just right. giving yourself some time. On. And it'll be like you're watching TV. Right. Meditating dreams. Something or right. uh, pictures will come in your mind. Yeah, well, exactly. I had a dream. I got to share this. Exactly. I had a dream, uh, December 17th. I'll never forget it. And I don't usually remember dreams, but I remember this vividly. And it was when God put faith up. Faith did not, you know, it could have just been that Jesus or it was a God or the universe appeared in the sky.
uh, when uh, Black in Egypt was right. featured in the message, and he spoke from Isaiah uh, 40, 29, mm -hmm. they that wait on the Lord. I leaned up, I got chills, I think I started crying, right. and I looked at the lady next to me, and I was like, God is speaking to me. I believe he showed himself to me, and that was the message that's in what the you sky. Asked. You talked to him, you yeah. asked that, and I was like, you know, what does this mean, yeah. you know? So I called my grandmother, and I was like, we'll be in church again. I'm anxious at this point, because I worship Jesus with right. the family. And I said, we'll be in church again, and she said, no, but I know somebody who can. I said, who? She said, the Lord. So I said, okay, that was good enough for me because right. I, I want to know like, <laughs> right, right, right now. Right now. I, I called my right. uncle. I give him yeah. a dream. He said, no. I said, okay, Lord, I'm, I'm going to wait. Okay, I hear you. I'm going to wait. Ten days later, because I was on chemo and treatment and all this the second mm -hmm. time around, you know, some four years ago. And ten days later, the 26th service, again, the number seven, I don't know what the what the movie means with that. But, wow. And he led me to this video. It's about midnight, almost midnight, um, ten to nine every in the morning. So mm -hmm. get treatment the next day and, and got finished watching that video and, and that's the day I decided I was done with, with, with treatment. You know, mm -hmm. I stopped, told my doctors I'm done, you know, and um, so April I had said and they they you know so I say that to Do say, you eat in here too? Yeah, no, no. I, I, I say that to say when you say had life and right. learning lessons, I, 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 I want to understand what that dream meant. Well, sound right. like to me it was psychic because the pastor spoke on that too. Yeah. Right. My dreams are psychic. See, that's what I yes. Um, so, um, I don't want to scare me because I want more of it, and that's my prayer. Lord, show me, give me more of your vision for me. So well, I'm, amen. I'm in raw. Let's okay. manifest that. Because yeah. we all need to be, because yeah. like that baby who got shot in, in Walmart, he won't listen to his spirit. Yeah. How you going to die today and you don't know? Right, right. You know, right. so we need to write down our dreams. We need to be more in connection with our divine yeah. self. Give them the um, right. 29. I, you know what? I love this book, y'all. I've been reading this book. As a matter of fact, this book used to be three dollars on thrift right. store. Now it's eight hundred and ninety nine dollars. The book is called wow. "How to Use Your Astral Power." The word "astral" means star power. Oh, astral means star. So twenty nine has a affirmation, you know powerful affirmation. Page twenty nine has a powerful affirmation. I said yes. Email it to me, and I email me, and I email you the book. Today. Right? Say this affirmation several times throughout the day. So um, everybody should actually say this. And what you want to do is say um, to yourself, um, God's pure white light is surrounding me and is throughout me and protecting me from all undisciplined spirits, negative thought forms, and evil entities. All right? That is what you want to say. So the prayer is this. Y'all, let's read this together, okay? okay. Now, um, when you do it, you want to... Um, Remember to imagine pictures as well as words. Right. So continuing now and for days and years to come. Continuing now and for days and years to come. I am moving towards my cherished goal. I am moving towards my cherished goal. My life is becoming rich with happiness. My life is becoming rich with happiness. A better economic condition and full contentment. Every action, enterprise, or endeavor, Every action, enterprise, or endeavor in which I wish to be involved is bringing increased rewards. Is bringing increased rewards. Life is making its joys and happiness easier to come by. Good fortune is coming my way more and more frequently. Good fortune is coming my way more and more frequently. I am learning how to share my good fortune by helping others along the way. I am truly moving closer to a oneness with God and Goddess. I am truly moving closer to a oneness with God and Goddess. And a full release of my inner self. And a full release of my inner self. Now this is an affirmation that we read every morning and every night. And then we also have our paper and pencil by our bed so we can write down our dreams. Because your dreams tell you what's going to happen before it happens. Case in point, um, I, I had gotten pulled over by, um, you sure can, on page 29. I got pulled over by a state trooper. And he said, and I was talking the way I talk, and he was like, you know what, can you pull over? So, um, so I pulled over because it was a roadblock. So I pulled over to the side. He said, you know what, I had a dream that my, my, um, 
my partner got into a car accident and died. And then when it happened, I felt like I was crazy. So I was explaining to him what was going on and everything. It, it helped him. But like from my own personal experience, I used to um, mentor the children in the neighborhood. And we were in the ghetto. We were in a you know a little challenged um, youth area. And the girl, she had taken so much from her boyfriend that she was just tired of it. She had had his two children. And she was just tired of taking his stuff, so she stabbed him. Can't, so she stabbed him. So he came to the store and was like, where is Ida? And I knew, but Eileen didn't know. So she was like, that bee stabbed me. And Eileen was like, what? She stabbed you? Oh, my God. But I had had a dream that night that Eileen had gotten taken up by a yellow Lamborghini and yanked all up and down the road, beat up all up and down the road. So after class, we stand outside. He comes talking about where's Ida. He leaves and comes back with five other people. I said, baby, this is my dream. The dude Eileen was talking to had on a yellow shirt with a Lamborghini on it. I said, brother, we got to go. So, <laughs> you know, so your dreams will tell you what's going to happen yeah. before it happens. Ooh. Okay. I want to say that when I, as I began to elevate me, spiritually, I have, if someone tells me something, that they're getting ready to do something or get into something. I have the vision, and when I get up in the morning, I know it's not going to happen, but I don't say nothing to them. So I've been elevated. It was scary at first, but I kind of know I get a sign in my sleep when I'm in my deep consciousness that it's not going to take place. So I don't go and say anything to anybody, but it's just an acknowledgement of, uh, spirit world and my elevation of the spirit. But well, with you being a Libra, y'all come into a room and balance all the energy. That's what y'all do naturally. So y'all are very psychic, you know, very intuitive. Mm -hmm. But I remember me being a cancer. I have a cousin who's a cancer as well. But it's still like 20, she's on the top. But one of the things you have, like you say, you're paying attention to stuff. Like one thing I noticed, I was always the one that people flock to. Keep someone to ask that no matter where I go, old, young, or whatever. My husband used to tell me, don't bring nobody home and don't feed nobody while you're out there because they'll follow you home. <laughs> but my cousin, what you were saying, it scared me. But I was having these dreams when we were younger. And it used to scare me until I got to the point where we talked about it. And I said, when I used to tell people, they used to look at me like I was the problem kid or something wrong. Right. Mm -hmm. Till she finally, my aunt can vouch for that, until she finally admitted she had these same dreams. The thing about it is we be in different states because her, her uh, my aunt was her sister was military, so we can feel each other and we dream that we know. The one biggest thing that I wanted to say when she was talking about her dream, and it always comes in a dream. Once I'm upset about something, I go to sleep and it shows me everything on what's gonna happen. Everything gonna be alright, and I wake up and it's not a war. But after September 11, my grandmother, her mom, were she was dying of cancer. But we was thinking she was beating it. But I had a dream, and it was so clear, and I woke up, so I knew it was showing me that this is about to happen. And the dream was, I was pregnant with my 15-year-old son during September 11th. And the dream was, my grandmother came, and she was speaking to me. And we were sitting at a table, like at the bar in the kitchen, but she started choking. And I was too big, I couldn't grab her and give her the Heimlich. Like, just what y'all saying. So I was like, I don't know what to do, and I don't know what to do, because I can't do it. And she died right there on the floor. Mm. So I woke up screaming out of, like, I couldn't catch my breath. And I called my cousin and told her, Mom is dying. She's going to die. And she was like, no, just leave me alone. She, I said, no, she's going to die. This was like in, right after September 11th. She's going to die. No, she is. She said, leave it alone. Don't tell nobody. Like you said, don't tell nobody. Let, tell let nobody. things go. Mm -hmm. So during that time, I think, after September 11th, like October, is when she announced, because I had to take my younger two kids back down here to Columbia, because we had to do 24 hours. Um, I was essential personnel. I didn't get breaks. They gave her and told her that she had 24 hours. Mm. But she lasted two, three weeks. I had a chance that I wasn't supposed to leave. And my husband, he said he was going to give me a surprise that I wasn't supposed to be there that I'd get in trouble. He drove all the way down six hours. And I was like, what, five, six months pregnant. And I came and spoke to my grandma. Actually, on the 24 hour, we made it there. She was in a coma, wasn't mm. supposed to wake up. But when me and my aunt got there, whispered in her ear, I told her, go ahead and leave. We okay. She woke up. Mm. She woke up. I got she started talking to everybody. She was talking to my, my daughter. My daughter was only like one or two years old. She wanted to say, we was like, shh, 
be quiet. She said, no, leave alone. She enjoyed the play of the kids. And she starts off. She told everybody I was pregnant because I didn't want to tell everybody. They do be telling. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah, my grandma did the same thing to me. She went home. <laughs> when she went home, after everybody came, I left from the surprise the day after Christmas. She died. We was back on the road at one forty six. She hadn't seen everybody. She made it back home. Mm. And I feel good about it because I was showing and I didn't panic. I enjoyed those last three weeks with her. Mm-hmm. You see what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. I decided and that's what Sean me telling. Like she always tell me, step into, don't get run away from who you are. Because I'm like, everybody want to come to me and ask me for problems. But she said, step into it. And when I started stepping into what my purpose was, everything was just coming to me. And I don't have to work hard to get it, mm-hmm. to receive it. I noticed that. Mm-hmm. That's beautiful. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And we have got to. Let me say this too. Is that the principle of incarnation is in the Bible. When Jesus asked his disciples, whom do they say that I am? And the disciples say, oh, you're Elijah. Oh, you are uh, one of the prophets of old. Oh, you're Jeremiah. Why are they saying names of individuals who supposedly existed hundreds of years before him? But yet, they, because that's the principle. So then he asks Peter, well, Peter, whom do you say that I am? And Peter said, oh, you're the Christ. And so then he said, oh, I, upon that, you know, upon your faith, we'll build, you know, I'll build the church. But the point was is that he said, they, he let the disciples answer him. And they said names like Jeremiah, one of the prophets of old, Elijah, you know. So, and then right in the book of John again, the disciples said, well, hold on, we're taught in our book that, Elijah's going to come before the great day of the Lord. And Jesus said, surely he did. That was John the Baptist. So incarnation is real. It's right there in the Bible, in the book of John. All right? So, you know, this is just something that's spooky. This is shows that there's a, there's a rebirth. Right. There's a rebirth in which that takes place. And we are more than just a physical. Yeah, yeah. We are so much more. And that's also why the Caucasians are fearful of us. Because they, they they say that we have magical powers. But because they teach us ABCs, one, two, three, food, clothing, and shelter, because they teach us as youth, we are stagnated. So you know? Mm-hmm. So <laughs> I just want to, I'm so, I'm so happy that we are embracing that we're more than what we are. Yeah, you okay, you too. It was so yeah, nice we're, meeting we're, you. We'll meet tomorrow. Okay. okay. Everybody be safe. Have you too. I was going to ask you about birthmarks. I've heard a lot of people think about birthmarks. And what are they? Uh, Birthmarks are, let's say this. Um, Because of a traumatic experience that could have happened in the last incarnation, the birthmark comes into this incarnation. Okay? Let's say um, um, in the last incarnation, someone got hit by a car. And the car messed up the thigh. So in this incarnation, they will have a birthmark on their thigh. Mm. What about birthmarks in time? What about birthmarks in preparing them? Then that means the lesson was taught. Oh, the lesson okay. was, the lesson if was, you don't um, have any birthmarks? Right. Oh, 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 oh if your birthmark disappears. Right. Because I had a major one like that, and it recently disappeared. Wow. And I was like, oh, what happened? Well, that means that, no, that means you learned the life lesson. Okay, I'm going to finish that. You, you, heal, you heal from that trauma, from that last incarnation. Yeah, That's what that means. Wow. Isn't that deep he said on the hip? Ain't that deep? It's funny that he said on the hip. Okay. That's where I had two. I had funny. one right on the That's back. That's the spirit. That's not funny. That is the it's spirit. It's not funny, right. And it's gone now. Like, in the last couple of years, I noticed it started fading, and then all of a sudden, I was like, wait a minute. It's not fading. Yeah. Well, that's because you didn't have the last incarnation. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. 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 Mm-hmm. And that was also how we could tell our um our grandparents that how they had incarnated back into the family. Right. That's also how we could tell too. Right. Mm-hmm. Right. Say that again loud and Explain that. Mm-hmm. That was also how you knew if your family had incarnated back into the family, um by birthmarks. Right. I remember we were in Cancun. No, we were in we were at the Mayans and the um, right. Olmecs in, in Mexico, Mexico, and the guy was saying that the ancients have a birthmark on their right between their butt cheeks at the top of their butt. So when they would see the child with that, then they knew that that was an ancient one. Mm-hmm. 
So are moles the same kind of way as birthmarks, or what are moles then? Yeah. Those are birthmarks also. Because I'm starting to get three moles on my hand, like in a triangle, that just started appearing. One appeared, a green one, and then I got the other two fairly recently. Wow. Like, what does that mean? It's cool. What finger is on? It's one is pointing on my left hand on my index finger. I guess the other one is on my middle finger, and then the other one is on the thumb. So thumb symbolizes worry. The forefinger pointer. So it's like in the middle, like like here. It's not exactly on the thumb, but I guess it would point to the thumb. I guess I do worry. The figure symbolizes uh, situation. The middle finger is uh, frustration. Normally it's for sexual frustration. Which one? The middle one? The middle finger. Okay. Mm -hmm. yeah, and the pointer finger. Thank you so much. Thank you. I'm sorry, what was the index finger? The index finger, uh, being that it's a pointer finger, it really is <laughs> uh, uh, trying okay. to find out what is going on. So it's more of a discoverer. So we talk about the three figures, and so I would analyze um, the meanings of the three figures and see how that, you know, how that, those particular marks. You know what I'm saying? Come okay. on this. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Because moles normally come by way of um, an overeating of sugar. Oh, what? Moles? Yeah, moles. The master thought going with it. What about bacon? Oh, that's interesting. Okay. Bacon? What you mean? Like in the uh, old Western tradition, you were born with a simple thing. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like Kwame, which means born on Saturday. Yeah. Right, I got you. Mm -hmm. Well, I was there. Yeah, that comes into play too with astrology, exactly. Okay. Yep. 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 Yeah, I was born on Saturday, so I was in a farm. Bless it. I'm going to talk about that before. So, I'm going to talk about that before. So, I'm going to talk about that before. So, I'm going to talk about that before. No, we're in a car. 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 No,
Oh, black strap elastic is good. You know, when you said about the heart, I have a lot of red hair that made me go crazy when I heard about the heart. Oh. <laughs> Those weak buildings of the earth as well. Better. Yes. That's what I was thinking. Oh, that's what I was thinking. So, you should have some gray hair when you're worried about the uh, Fo -tee. people in New York. Fo-Tee. Fo Fo also has a person who can get this help. Um, for gray hair, Fo-Tee would be good. Fo-Tee? Fo-Tee. F-O-T-I. Fo-Tee. I don't want to know and get mad. I get old and get mad. Yeah, I love that. Fo Foti. <laughs> Foti is good. Foti is real good to do that. What does gray hair mean? And burdock. Huh? It's, it's a deficiency. It's a deficiency. Right. It's, it's a mineral deficiency. Um, that, the, the uh, mineral is called calalis or calisis, something like that. But I can't remember the, the exact name. But it starts with a C, and I remember that. Um, it ch because um, there's a deficiency also of copper. Mm -hmm. You need a little bit more copper also in the body. So where do you get the copper? Are you um, um, green leafy vegetables and in particular um, kale, spinach, as well as um, black strap molasses. That's what that's what is in the black strap molasses. And right. wearing copper too. And wearing copper, right? Exactly. <laughs> what about the, uh, you know what I'm talking about? Like you can make that. Yeah, you can make that. You need a nine volt. You need a nine silver, gold, copper, yeah, platinum. Yeah, what you need it's is supposed a to be. Battery, and you need a glass of water, and you need to put the penny into it. And With them butterfly clips, right. and you connect it into the water, and then the water will turn color. The water will turn to the if you have it. Uh -huh. so you have That's how they make it. Where they were selling um colonial silver for nine hundred dollars a gallon. And I can, had to learn how to make it. Right your house right now. <laughs> <laughs> nine volt battery. Um, it helps with healing. Right. Mm -hmm. Yep, you can use it to wash, or you can also drink it. Mr. T wore gold. Remember Mr. T used to wear that? That's how he yeah, healed himself he from cancer. Wear gold? Uh-huh. Wow. That's why he used to wear so much. That's why he used to wear so much. Oh, that's why he used to wear so much. That's why he used to wear it so much. He used to wear it too. Mm -hmm. So, I have another question that's not in the description. Are you reading the uh, Bible? Um, this goes into like the power of affirmation, the prayers, coming from all the ones of ancient Kenya in Africa, as well as also how it correlates to the inside of the Bible, showing that it's the same information. Um, for example, Psalms 104 and Psalms 110 comes directly from Amenhotep the third and Amenhotep the fourth, who is Akhenaten, or Unk Hunter. Which is supposed to be why I heard the rock night. So, I did have another question. You were talking about the astrophysics thing or traveling and stuff? Mm -hmm. Is that something, um, what do you do about the people who don't come to their meetings? Oh, relax. Yeah. Relaxation is number one. Mm -hmm. We call it the RCC. Relaxation, concentration, concentration, and then contemplation on how you're going to carry out what you want to want right. to see. But we ask your travel every night. Yeah. Every night we ask your travel in our dreams. But most of us don't remember them, or some of us have nightmares, so we turn that up. So, how do you remember them? Because I know, like, what Nicholas said, I've been having a lot of dreams. And um, sometimes, like, I can remember them for a hot second. But how you how you strengthen your ability to remember them is by writing them down. Because then when you write them down, so y'all need to put some paper and pencil by the bed. And also, to like me, I write mine down because I know this is a glimpse into the future. It saves our life. Well, okay. I know, I know when I need to be still. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. Do what? Do what? Clarity. 
Yeah, Help for clarity. Oh, really? I can mm-hmm. do that tonight. Under your bed while you sleep. Uh-huh. Yeah, what would you say? Water? Water. Water. Glass of water. 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 Okay, up until I was 12, I knew I was very good at astral projection, which is automatically always happened. And then around 12, I guess I was coming back to my body, right. and I got, I don't yeah, know what happened. You got more incarnated into your body. Right, I got more incarnated, yes. and so I came back in, like, but, right, but I felt like I couldn't get back in. Bingo. And then oh, okay. I felt yeah. like I couldn't get back in, oh, wow. and then somebody came to me to help me get back in my yeah, body. Now, that is called, that's called paralysis. Oh. Or in the South, we call it witch riding yeah. your back. Right. The witch is right in your back. So here in the south, that's what we call it. And so, yeah, sometimes you have a hard time coming back into your body, and sometimes you do need your spirit guide so that's in order to help you. Yeah. And then after that, I stopped remembering the experiences outside of the room. Or, or after actual project. I mean, it, it right. would just be so clear that I, could, I would go shopping, like I would go to Ooh. stores. <laughs> you know, like my parents are going on a trip. I would go to the place... And then I would tell them about it when I came. I used to spook people out. And then they just kind of stopped and I was like, okay, so that's what I want. So bring it back. I want to bring it back mm-hmm. so much. Then just ask for it, because a lot of times we ask for it to stop because it's scaring us and it makes us look crazy. But ask for it to come back. RCC, mm-hmm. relaxation, concentration, and contemplation. And so you said that water near the bed. The concentration. It's just thinking about you thinking about you wanting to. Um, to actually travel once again. Okay. The contemplation is where, who you going to go see while you are outside of your body. It's going to be your grandmother, your great-grandmother, somebody, you know what I'm saying? Who in your family are you going to go? So just think of them, and then you will come out Does and have be, to be family with them. It can be anything. Not now. <laughs> no. You don't have to be a family member. Okay. I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. She said, come see her. Okay. 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 Okay.